without any further ado, I'd like to have Coach Mike McCarthy from the Green Bay Packers. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, as far as youth and energy being instilled in the Green Bay Packers, I don't feel very young right now. And uh, I got a lot of energy, though, because I've been in the bathroom about four times since I've been here, all the coffee I drank. But uh, I just want to thank you, first of all, for the opportunity to come here and speak today. Because uh, it wasn't long ago that I was sitting in one of those chairs myself. And I know, Jeff, if you had a chance to listen to Jeff Jagosinski speak, if you were here, how passionate he is about, you know, Wisconsin football. And originally, when I agreed to do this, um, this clinic, you know, the idea was so Jeff and our uh, defensive coordinator, Bob Sanders, can stay up in Green Bay and work. And it, it was really important for him to be here today. So, and it actually was uh, a very productive time for us because we had five hours alone in the car. Well, we got two and a half down, two and a half going back. So we were able to get some work done as far as conversations. So. And it was also good, I'm glad I was here today because uh, that play he just put in 18 fours, we're calling a 98 strike in Green Bay. I, don't, I, gotta, I gotta follow my offensive coordinator around, the state, uh, coordinator around the state so he don't change the damn offense on me. So <laughs> I gotta, gotta keep an eye on him. But hey, as I had a chance to you know, think about uh, this clinic today, I wanted to make sure I had the opportunity to maybe give you something that you could take back with you. Um, I recall back, I'm from my hometown of Pittsburgh, and they have a big clinic back here, the Pete Imperial uh, Clinics, and it was very similar to this format. And I can remember a prominent offensive coordinator in the, in the National Football League was getting ready to speak, and I, I was a graduate assistant at the uh, University of Pittsburgh, and I went out there, sat in the front row, had my tablet done, and could not wait to hear this guy speak. And after about an hour and a half, uh, you know, his opening statement was KISS, keep it simple, stupid. And I thought, that's good stuff, I'm going to write that down. And uh, at the end of his speech, that's the only thing I had on my, that's the only thing I had on my tab. So I'm not going to tell you some stories. I'm going to talk about quarterback fundamentals. And as I have had the opportunity, I am not a quarterback. I know I look like a former quarterback, and that is true and it is accurate. I was watching Jeff put his on. I was going to make a foolish joke about him, but I guess I can't say anything now. Plus, <laughs> <laughs> all the foolish guys I met this morning, I really thought about not saying <laughs> But what I want to talk to you today about is quarterback play. Um, I've had the opportunity to work with quarterbacks 14 years in the National Football League. I've had the opportunity to learn from the best. And my feeling is the quarterback position is the most fundamentally, fundamentally neglected position in football. And really, at the pro level, if we're talking about fundamentals of a guy's strong motion, there's a good chance we've got the wrong guy at the NFL level. But it's important from an evaluation standpoint you can improve people's fundamentals at any level. And uh, I have a format that I've established. I've used it uh, at least over the last six or seven years. I use it in evaluation of college players. I use it in our quarterback school. We just went through it, Jeff and I, last week with Aaron Rodgers and our group up there at Green Bay. But it's an identification of quarterback throwing motion. It's something that I, I, I truly believe in. It's something we work on all the time, particularly in the offseason because ball accuracy is obviously critical. And a lot of people, quite frankly, just can't sit down and explain how to improve, how to correct, you know, something that is wrong within a guy's strong motion. So with that, I'm going to take you through this, this uh, outline here. Nice title page here. All right, first thing here, footwork. When you develop a quarterback's footwork, and I'm going to talk about footwork fundamentals and throwing fundamentals, okay? You always start with the five and a hitch footwork. There's three, uh, three areas of a drop. The most important thing for a quarterback in the passing game, drop back passing game, is to get away from the center, okay? So the three stages of a drop are get away from center. At some point, your body has to come under control. Because if you're coaching the hell out of the getaway, you got to coach them on his feet to get them under control. Because we don't want you don't want bad habits where the front shoulder comes up. So you got to get away from center, your body comes under control, and then at some point you got to get back to your landmark that the protection unit is establishing for you to throw the ball. Everything we do on offense is about making the quarterback successful for the Green Bay Packers. That's something I learned at a young age in the West Coast offense. That's something I truly believe in. Because when push comes to shove, the quarterback's got to play. 
You know, we're going to run 18 for, excuse me, 98 strike. We'll get that cleared up on the way home. But uh, when push comes to shove, when the game's on the line, the quarterback's going to make the plays. So with that, everything we do is designed about to make the quarterback. I'm talking about protection schemes, everything. Implementation of two-minute offense goes right into our base day one offense, things like that. So with that, same, same approach goes to footwork. So when you're getting away from center, the first two steps, I'm just going to go through this outline. I'll show you some film better what I'm talking about. The punch step, okay? That's identification of, the, of your first step away from center. Some guys teach a staggered stance, okay? The way I learned it was you had the punch step, your hands come up, your ass goes down, and the punch step all happens at once, okay? Because particularly as you increase, and it may be even on ice school, I don't know, the defensive players are looking for movement under center, okay? They're looking for movement under center. So if you got guys that are twitching their hands, bad habit. You got guys that are knocking their knees, Bad habit, all right? A balanced stance for quarterback play is no different than you're teaching your linemen, no different than you're teaching the linebackers. His body's gonna come alive at once. You gotta put the player's body in position to do that, okay? The punch step is the starting point of the movement of the quarterback away from center, okay? So your punch doesn't really even start. So you got punch, reach, okay? What you're trying to establish is your reach, in your crossover steps. Those are the first two steps of a five-step drop. You want to get as much green grass as possible. And the thing you look for when you're teaching, what we'll do is we'll start off with the quarterbacks, punch, reach. You got to teach them to open up that hip. Right-handed quarterback, I'm talking about the right hip. You'll see right away, and I'll show you on the film more of what I'm talking about, guys with tight hips work on a line. Okay, you're working everything on the line. Guys with tight hips, the right leg will wrap right around the line. That's not what you want, okay? That foot strike should be about six inches past the line, okay? So your punch reach, get them out of there. I tell the quarterbacks all the time, do all your work at the front end of your drop, okay? All the work at the front end of your drop, because at the end of it, you want to be high in the pocket with great vision, enough separation, so you can step up into your landmark and throw the football, okay? So the punch reach is very important. The punch reach crossover, so, Big thing, when you're training quarterbacks, you go out to the first day, stretch the hell out of their groins. There's not first year in the league, 1993, Mark Velasco, Iowa Hawkeye, you remember the name? Another Pittsburgh quarterback, I might add, too. Okay, that's Pittsburgh guys, but they'll throw that in, easy jacks. Okay, so with that, he comes out first day, poor guy quarterback, Mark's a great guy, he's in the league about six or seven years, pulls his groin, pulls his groin, because what happens is, you start working on this forward, and this is a critical coaching point for young quarterbacks. You go out there, the guys haven't done anything in a couple months, you go out there day one, they do 55, 60 drops. Okay, you got to stretch their groins. Two reasons. Get them away from center, get distance, and secondly, when you're training footwork, the groin is going to tighten up. So that, that is, that's a key coaching point there. So the first two steps classify the getaway. Okay, the, the third step is called the control step. Simply meaning, your body has to come under control. And something I've, I've, I've always taught is, on a control step, you've got to teach a heel strike, okay? If your body's going back, or you, want that, you want that shoulder line always level. Extend that third step, because you're still what? You're trying to get away from center, okay? Don't let them on their toes. If they're on their toes, the weight's going that way. Teach them the heel strike on the third step. The step will be longer, you get a little more green grass, and it brings your body under control. Okay? So the third step, go ahead. Just get done. The third step is a control step. Teach the heel strike. And I'll show you some examples of that. We may not have examples of that because these are new guys. Alright, so you got control step. That's where the weight starts to tra transfer. Heel to toe on the third step. Okay? Okay, now the get back. Okay, the fourth step, another key thing you're looking for when a guy drops. If he's too heavy on his third step, he won't even use his fourth step because his weight distribution is too heavy. Okay? Get him to dig. If it's a right-handed quarterback, he's got to dig off that third step. He's got to, you can't even see my feet. You got, he's got to dig with that left foot. Okay? Use the fourth step. And then the fifth step is the plan. Okay? So that's, that's, that's the identification of five-step drop. I'll do a little quicker and we'll get to the film.
Okay. All right, now the finish. Okay, I'm just going to go through identification. A target step is when you come off your fifth step, you can go five, five, or five, four, five, five. Target step length. Okay, you hear the term overstride. That's when you come off your target step is the foot, your front foot pointing to your target. You've got to look at the length of that step. And you've you got to stop overstrides. Okay, you're sure I'll get into that in a minute too. Target step with weight distribution. You can see a lot of bad habits because obviously you throw in a football, you've got shoulder and hip rotation. You can learn a lot about a guy's weight distribution on his target step to help correct it. There's been a number of them. Two things you look for. A guy whose front foot opens too much to the left, his shoulder and hip rotation is coming across his foot. Okay? A lot of similarities to a bell swing. I can't go forth the shit, but if you do, apply it. Alright? So with that, if you close it, then you can't come across. So those are two things you look, you look for. When a guy comes over top of his front step, the target step, the distribution should be clean. It should be clean into his, into his, uh, into his motion. Rhythm and motion is critical to throwing a football accurate. Okay? So the weight distribution is another thing you can, you can help a young guy fix. Okay? There's some things you can fix on a guy. There's some things that just take forever. I had a guy in the recent past, this one, one of the worst fundamentally guy I've ever been around, and he had, when I went through the sideline, he had 10 points of correction. So we said, we're going to fix five this year. And we didn't get it, we didn't get that done. I also had a guy that's playing in Carolina right now that was was very similar. And he fixed this, and he's a very he's a very successful quarterback. But it ain't because of his throwing motion or pump, but you can improve guys' throwing motion at any level. It's critical for you guys to get it at your level. Because that, that's when they need it. That's when they need it. But I'm just I'm making a big point on the target weight distribution. Because that's something you can really identify with a guy in the back, because you know. If you don't have access to filmers, you just sit there and watch a guy. Those are the things you look for, okay? Hips and shoulder rotation. You're looking for rhythm. Nothing hurt, herky jerky. You're looking for the coordination of the hips and shoulders coming through the target line, okay? Okay, full work. Depth of drop, all right? Depth of drop. Five steps traditionally, you're, 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 you're looking for a seven, seven, seven yard landmark, okay? Big seven, nine steps. When you're training the guy, if you want seven in the game, you better get eight in practice. I can tell you that right now. It all, it, and the biggest thing with that is get it on the first two steps. That, that's where guys, if you look at guys that are short, they're either tight hipped and they're depth of drop, or they're, they're, they're just cruising out behind the center. And what's that? What happens there? Center steps on his foot. Oh, the guard hits the ball. You got all kinds of stuff. That's bad fundamentals. That is bad fundamentals. Now you don't want your center drop stepping, but when stuff like that happens, that's that's poor fundamentals. And it, it happens in our league, all right? Fundamentals is is, it, is something that lacks in football. The NFL in a lot of, in, a, in a lot of er, a lot of areas is a bad tackling league right now. And that's something we talk about as coaches. And that that has to improve. It's no different than quarterback play. Okay. All right, ball carriage. You, you, you go. To, I'm sure you go to clinics. I learned it one way and always done it, and now I've had a chance. That people ask me, why do you teach the ball carriage that way? I, I know even more now why I do. I used to just say uh, that's the way Jim Montana did, but that's that's not a good answer. Okay, that's not a good answer. Ball carriage. You want the height of the ball. You want the height of the ball between between the nipples, right here. And you want it. You want it two hands on the ball all the time. I'm not a believer in this, okay? I understand why they teach this, because it gets you to your point of release quickly, and that's great. But once again, throwing the football involves you gotta generate power. You gotta, gener you gotta generate movement from the left side of your body if you're right handed quarterback. It's no different than throwing a punch. If I'm throwing a punch, I can stand like this when I throw a punch, you wanna be relaxed. Same thing with throwing a football. I'm not into tightening up the muscles here. That's an unnatural, that's, that's unnatural. Okay? The ball should be right here, right here, because there's two ways of playing quarterback. Obviously in the pocket and out of the pocket. In the National Football League, there will be 5.8. It comes out five something, sometimes six times a game, six times a game. I've charted now since I've been in the league. That the quarterback has to come out of the pocket and make a play. 
So everything we do in training quarterbacks and starts the quarterback school is we train them in the pocket and out of the pocket. Okay? So the ball, if you want a guy to move around, that is probably not, the, in my opinion, the best way to have him move around. But he, he can, he's a lot more natural moving around with the ball right here. Okay? Not down here, up here. Okay? Up here. But keep it natural. Keep the elbows in. You don't want this here. Okay? You want this natural movement. That's what we're talking about ball carriage. Height of it, body frame, two hands on a ball. Okay? Very important coaching point there. Okay, when I talked about the draw, you got the ball carriage, the draw of the football, okay? The way you draw the ball back. That's what we're referring to there, okay? The ball carriage is nice and loose here. You want the draw. You don't want to drop in your draw, okay? Rich Gannon, great quarterback. Big drop in his draw, all right? You want to bring it back because, once again, the theory behind this is to get the ball to the, to the point of release as quick as possible. That's where you coach the draw. Get the ball to your natural point of release. Everybody has, everybody's a little different in their throwing motion. But that's something that you can improve. You look at the course. I always get the scoop, was it supination? Yep. Thank you. All right, supination of the ball. Okay, that's, that's not good. You'll, you'll see, God, you want, the, you want the ball, you want the wrist to be open and flexed and natural. Supination, you're exposing the ball to wide rushers. You're, you're creating a longer delivery. Break it now, break it now. Very important. Angle to the high point of axis. Something we all learn in show. When you're, when you're looking at the film, I'm going to show you a film. We take the quarterbacks, day one, get the film about 10 feet high. We're a little too high in this film here in Green Bay. Shoot them one time from behind, one time where he throws into the camera, one time from the side where you can, you can see, and I'll show you on the film, one time the left 45, one time the right 45, because that's how you break down. But the point of the axis, when the guy's throw motion comes through, that's what you're looking for, okay? You want about a 45 degree angle. You gotta be, see these are things you can watch a guy throw and you can help him stand behind him, okay? If he's at that angle, he's got that much room for air. Now obviously you don't want to throw over the top with a football, but with that you also can see where the hand comes. You know, another thing you look for on fit, the guys when he's watching, if he's here. If they're up in here, you're what? You've got too much rotation. You got too much, you got you got bigger room for air. Now you, you go through history, some of your side on quarterbacks or some of the most active guys you've ever been, but they're what? They're touch throws. Okay, you got the, got the elbow underneath the ball, you have a tendency for the ball to take off. Not good in this part of the country. Okay, not good in this part of the country. So my point is when you talk about angle to the high point on the axis, that's the axis I'm talking about. You want to be here. You don't want to be over here because now your room for air in, 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 your, in your throwing motion is bigger. Okay? So these are all these are all coaching points that that we use and um, okay front shoulder okay now I've had a problem here you're telling the guy to get away from center what's well, natural his front shoulders pops up bad news okay because when you come back you want your front shoulder line discipline to be level okay because when you're throwing a football what I tell them all the time is throw downhill once you're thrown downhill if you come off that back foot you want that front shoulder down you want your elbow in Okay? You want the elbow in. The guy, I'll tell you what, the guy that said point to your target ought to be shot. I hope he's not famous, but he should be shot. That is not good. Okay? It's no different than throwing a punch. You don't throw a punch from out here. Your power is in tight. Same thing here. You want that elbow tight. Okay? You want the shoulder line, you want the shoulder line level. You don't want the front shoulder up. A lot of problems happen with that. Okay? You've had bad experiences with, with people that the pull. I talk about the pull. That is the, that, that is the power generated on your left side of your body. Okay, the pull. The hand should never go above your shoulder line. Okay, your pull should be tight. You go look at you go look at Elway. You look at Favre. You look at Green. You look at guys that can, can get the ball. It. Is, I mean, you look at the power on your left side, your hips and shoulders. It starts with the pull. It starts with the pull. It ain't out here. You're not pointing to the target. It is bang. It disappears, the front shoulder is down. Down. It's on target line, they're coming right over the top. Okay, we're coming, you know what I'm talking about. Hit your shoulders are coming through. Okay? So left hand, right hand, the elbow tightness, that's where all the power comes in throwing in football. Okay, point of release. Another thing you can watch as you watch on film. 
Okay, they use it all the time. It's been a pretty good indicator for me for accuracy. Because like, you know, when you get college film, you get all different types of film. I'm sure you guys have the same problem. You may have the guy that takes a film on top of the van. You may have the guy, you know, you just get different, you get all different types. But the thing you can find on film is, a lot of times you look for that elbow flexibility. Okay, elbow, arm flexibility, shoulder flexibility. Excellent, ex excellent drills to do with your quarterbacks. Very important, it helps their accuracy. Okay, because as we all know, you throw the ball 25 times a game, four or five times you get to stand in there and throw the football. You gotta throw the ball from different angles. Okay, you got, got, you got holes to throw through, you got touch throws. So looseness, loose elbow, I always look for guys that can get their elbow almost pointed to the target. Okay, elbow flexibility. Target line angle, too. Okay, that's what target line angle is what I'm talking about right there. Okay? You, you, I mean, obviously you don't want to be here, but you want to be, you want to be about right here. If you, if you got a guy, young guy, he's out here, get him up here. Get him up here. Okay, follow through. As you get into drill work, work on lines. Work on lines, drop back on lines, throw the ball on lines. We have the quarterbacks warm up every day. They play a simple game. They're gonna hit, they're gonna put the ball in the face mask of the guy they're throwing to. It's a point game, okay? It, 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 you know, they'll have, they have fun with it. But they're on a the line, they're working on the line, they're stepping, they're working on their target step, hips and shoulder rotation, and follow through. Something I make them all the time, do all the time is, you know, their hips and shoulders, that's your rhythm and everything, but when a guy's really bringing his hips and shoulders, his back foot will come off. It's not bad for training. It's good for training. And you can, you can see when guys really got to drive a football, they're coming off on top of that target step, and that back foot comes off the ground. That tells you they're getting their hips and shoulders through the throw. Okay, that's another good indicator. Getting their hips and shoulders through the throw. Okay? I should rewind that back there. I think there's one more slide after that. And then basically, and it's a good format. I, I wish I had, I should have put it on the other screen. I, I have it in like a textbook format, but they, they, they want to put it on VHS or. But then what you do is you just, you go through every one of those points of release, you just, you take, you take the film I'm about to show you, just take the five, it's a very simple process. You take five, I make them do it five, five times. Drop back, throw the football into the camera. Drop back, throw the football away from the camera, one, five times from the side, and then what they do is, and it's ugly. Okay, I'm going to show you two guys the first time they ever did it. It is ugly. Then you take them and coach them. And then they see the improvement. Our guys are already seeing improvement after two weeks. But to get them there must improve it because, once again, particularly at, at a higher level, you can't go out and say, man, you're screwed up. you got 11 points of fundamental work we got to get done. That's not realistic. All right? The things that really matter, there, there, there are major corrections and then there are minor corrections. Pick the major ones. Okay, pick the major ones. Target step is a big one, you know, okay? Rhythm and stroke, that's what you're looking for. If a guy has a lot of rhythm in his body, the same stroke all the time, you got a chance. you got a chance to be active. you got a very good chance of being active. So that, that's something we look for. Let me show you a film here, and maybe some of this make a little more sense here. All right, this is this was Aaron's uh, first time down going, going through the format. Now, you see right there, Okay, look at the punch. See the punch step? You see, see a little tightness in his hips? See the right foot, how far across he is? That's something we'll, we'll fix here. It's an easy fix, okay? Look, okay, he can get more in his crossover. Watch his third step. He's up on his toes. You see how heavy, see how heavy he is at the back end? Good mechanics, you see, we talk about target line. Watch the, the way the ball tracks. You can watch the way the ball, you know, they're not, they're not worse than the shoe come back and say, hey, this guy's throwing curveball. I, I, I've coached guys like that. That's because their hips and shoulders are, are, are so left to right, their target step is so wide open, they're thrown across their body. Okay? Obviously, you don't want that. But that's just, I'm, I'm just going to let this run. But you want to do it, well, this, we're actually too high. You want to shoot one time behind, one time into it. Okay? Watch the target line. You want to go once to the right, then we didn't, we didn't do it to the left that day, but then you want to go once from the, from the side. You can get a lot out of this film here. 
That's his, that's his natural, that, that, that's, that's what he, we didn't say anything to him, okay? But I mean, when he came out of college, it was a lot higher. But I'll say this about him. It's comfortable, it's not stressed, okay? It needs to be relaxed. That's the most important thing. <coughs> but you can get your depth here. You can see, you can see his targets, his follow through on his target step. That's like, that's a bad shot. Then just last year, same, same, same kind of guy, just come out of college. Here's his first time going. This is the height of the film you'd rather have. This is about 12 feet. I apologize about the You look at the punch step right there. See how tight hip he is? He's a real, he's a real athletic guy too. A lot like Aaron. Just, just they've never been taught. See, he's off the midline. There's no heel to toe. And part of it too is they're trying to be measured. See the, see the ball tracking? <coughs> See the, the, the point, the point of the elbow. <clears throat> this, is, this is a better angle than the coach off of, the, as far as the film. See, I'm talking about the point of axis. Watch, watch his right elbow come through. That's what he's looking for. See now, let's stop this. This guy here has he he blocks his heel out a lot. Okay, he blocks his target step. Need an opening. You see his weight distribution, it's always jagged. <coughs> you see it here. Watch his front foot. See, see how when his foot hits that? You see how when his foot hits, then it resets. His foot hits and resets. It should be it should be one even distribution. If your foot should come down, your hips and shoulders should come right over top. But his point, his point of release is excellent. Too far off the midline, no dig. I watch he'll go four or five. I'm going to show you, he's got a bad habit of what else are you here? Yeah. You know what? I, what I ended up doing was, uh, if, it, if it was if the guy already had it in his training, I, I would let it go. Because some guys are more comfortable; they feel like they're already out. And that, I never used to teach it, but about six years ago, I had a guy that was comfortable doing it. Once he, you, know, you, you can, you can still go half stagger and still get your punch. The so punch is what starts everything. Okay, your hands, it, it starts out. But as far, as far as the height of the film, you want to be about 10 feet and have a cue in there real tight. But here's a, I'll stop right here. Okay, now, he had a number of bad habits. You see his left elbow coming up above his, real high here, you don't want that, okay? Now you watch him at the end of the year, he's got the front shoulder down. You pick that left arm up on your pole, you're creating a lot of bad habits. Your delivery's longer, okay? You're taking power away from your throat. Okay? And, and, and also, you, you don't have your front shoulder down. And what he does is he has excellent follow through, so he overcomes the bad habit of the pull. All right, well, that was as clean as I like. Okay, this is an old tape. I'm just going to let this run and, and talk you through it. Quarterback drills. Make it a pile, but what you believe in. This is, this is an old one. I haven't updated it. I don't have the uh, I don't have the uh, Saints and the Niners, 49ers, but this this is an old you'll, you'll see some familiar faces. Everything you do, footwork. We make our quarterbacks eight percent body fat or low. Okay, it's a movement game these days. Okay, we start with jump ropes a lot. All right, we just do a warm up, just warm them up, the Elvis skirt back, Mr. University of Michigan. Just just warm them up. These are all basic drills. There's not there's nothing like whoa, that's that's unbelievable jump rope drill. Right? Nothing, just basic stuff that you do, okay? Just work on your right foot, work on your left foot. Because everything, everything we do, there's drills in here, they're all pliable to the drop of the quarterback, and movement of the quarterback. So you make them warm up to the left foot, right foot. This is just a film to show the guys when they're getting ready to go through for the first day 
quarterback school. So Steve Matthews, I don't remember that guy. He, he shattered his leg on a quarterback sneak. He went over the top, he came back, he broke it. He's never supposed to play football again. We had him on uh, IR diner for two years. Boxer shuffle, so just some of the basic jump ropes. So we do a lot of footwork drills. Okay? Side to side movement, do a lot of movement drills. And what we do is we make it competitive. Like we'll take this right here, we'll go as many as you can in 20 seconds. You know, where you got to do 20 of them for time. And you know, the, the quarterback that I've, that I've had up to work, they're the most competitive group on your team. It's amazing how, how wild they go just, just, just to win a four screw drill, okay, or some of these ball drills that I'll show you. There's Rich Gannon there. You guys remember Rich. But as far as the movement part of it, you can't coach it enough. And I can't stress that enough. Six times a game, he's going to have to come out, of that court, come out of that pocket and make a play. And we talk a lot about escaping from the pocket, particularly a right-handed quarterback. When you escape to your left, first three steps is called the dead zone. Because when you're moving left, your right-handed quarterback, okay, I mean, you're, you're in a dead area. Okay, you're in a dead area. There's Montana, there's the over and back. That's for the transfer of your weight. Okay. Little Packer Hasselback. You know, they do this for time, for 10 seconds, they, they compete. The box drill, this is part of your lead step. Training your lead step. I've been told that guy keeping time, time looks like a porn star. I don't agree with it. <laughs> This is all part of that punch step, getting that, getting that foot out of there, you know. You guys, you've seen these drills a hundred times with, uh, with basketballs, same deal. Just do a, start off with a warm-up. Guys have a good time with this, particularly when they get embarrassed the first time through. Just have them warm-up around their head, around their waist, around their ankles, figure eight, around the right leg, around the left leg, then left leg, and then we compete and do it for time. And just take 10 seconds. That's, pretty, that's a pretty good one right there, and I'll let you know it here at the end. So, left leg. Do as many as you can in 10 seconds. We keep trapped. I, 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 I got statistics for the last 14 years, and it's, it's funny to see the guys now, young guys you know, trying to beat you know, Rich Gannon or Todd Bowman, and, you know, Aaron Brooks, and Jake DeLone, guys that have done this in the past. They're, they're, they're not trying to beat their scores. So it's just another way of being competitive. Figure eight, it's a, this is a good drill. And this is something we'll do all through the spring, all through training camp. Quarterback handles the ball every down, okay? Every down. Guys with small hands, this helps them out a lot. Okay, back scramble drill. Once again, this is uh, another movement drill here. One foot in the hole. You know, every, every, every position of football is using the bags. Take a five step drop. Matt, Matt had a little more training here. You can see Matt. Punch, reach, sit control step. I was trying to see the third step there. He, 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 he did a really good job. Uh, he, he, he was a joy to work with. Watch the heel to toe I'm talking about right here. See the crossover? Watch the heel to toe. See his front shoulder, see? See how long the step is? So you can take a long third step if you heel strike. Now see how his body's downhill? It comes off his plant foot? That's what you're, that's what you're looking for. You want, you want a guy, like he's coming off the pitcher mound, throwing downhill. That's, that's a good picture of it right there. One time through the back, I'm always talking about their hips and shoulders into the throw. Now, I've been to clinics where guys say, okay, now when you run to your left, you throw off your left foot. You run to your left, I've also gone to clinic, I said, when you run to your left, throw off your right foot. What I tell them is, when you run to your left, 
you better worry about the son of a bitch behind you. You better get the ball out. Okay? And that's important from training. That's important from training. So when they run their left, he throws it off his left foot. I tell him next time, throw it off your right foot. So I don't know what you guys believe in, but don't get caught up in that. When they're running to their left, they better get the hell out of the way and get their hips and shoulders around. Make them train throwing it off your left foot and their right foot away from their throwing arm. That's important. Because if there's not worse than a guy comes out in the game, he has to make that throw, and the guy's wide open, he misses it. You gotta train him for it. Okay, same drill to the right, one in the hole. You see it? That's not a good job right there. Okay, there's some bad ones on the This was kind of used as a warm up in the old days. We kind of involved this. Now, a lot of these drills, we've kind of taken them to another level, too. Just like you would in any other position. I mean, make it, make it creative to what you're doing schematically. But you want to, the reason for the cones as you come out of the drill is to make them dip and get their hips and shoulders around so they're throwing downhill to the sideline. Throwing downhill. Big coaching point there. Okay, this is redirect drill. This is kind of old one. This is kind of grown over the years. This is really good drill. People talk about pocket awareness. Well, hell, how do you teach it? You know, we, we teach them to hitch up and throw, slide to the right and throw. Yeah, a little more like. Oh. Yeah, it was hard to find one to get far on here. But as far as the slide drill, what we do now is we, we, we build a pocket with five dummies. And we make them take a five step drop. We tell them. You take a legitimate five-step drop. If I don't say anything, you hit and throw it to the guy right over the middle. Because what happens is the drill work, they're back here waiting for you to give you the, the, the redirect sign. But what you do is get them going because if, tell them if he hits on his third step, he's going to push off that third step a full, a, full, uh, a full gap and get the ball out. It's no different in the game. He's going to be able to slide left and right. He's going to be able to hitch up and then get out of the pocket. The worst drill you could ever do in scramble drills is have a guy go back five, five, and then just wheel out of the pocket. It doesn't happen that way in the game. The defensive end's got contained. Make him hitch up in the pocket, then out. And that's why I was talking about the dead zone. When they hitch up in the pocket, then out. Now, there's a picture there. Now, we'll tell them, hey, this guy gets beat inside, you got to go right now. So we do it. Every imaginable situation out of that pocket drill that you, that you can think of. Make it game-like. That, that's, the, that's why you have drills. But when, you, when you're teaching to your left, you, you, you really got to talk about the dead zone right there. That's a guy that got caught in the dead zone. Get the ball out. Throwaways are okay. Throwaways are okay. Sacks are not. Okay? We had a guy that would, that, that, that would take a lot of sacks. And, you just, you just take them out there. You can see some of that film. That's, a, that's in the middle of the season. And the guy I used to work for it. When someone went wrong, he said, get their ass out there after practice Wednesday and Thursday in season and drill it. And we had a young guy try to, he was supposed to try to make him uh, jump over the bag. It, 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 that's not a good picture there. That's not, that's not what you're looking for right there. You want, you want to dip and roll. You want the hips. When you're vacating to your left, don't go flat. Teach them to Get your hips, get away from it. Because when a guy goes to the opposite side, I've said it three times now, it's a dead zone. Then if you got a guy that doesn't know how to put the button up, they hate this drill. Okay, this will really piss them off. You got, you, got a, you got a quarterback that takes hits on the sideline, make him go out and do that on Wednesday in front of all, all his teammates. Okay, that, that's exactly what that was right there, running down the sideline, all cool and get whacked. All right, get out of bounds. Get out of bounds. So, I mean, there's all, all different. You got some bad slides, too. <laughs> get, a, get a big bag. Make sure you get a big bag. This guy here's pissed off because it wasn't him that did it. He can't believe he had to do the drill. That's good, though. That's, that's keep him going. Uh, this is an old drill. We haven't done this in a while. Then there's a net drill. You know, Jeff talked about the, uh, he talked about the, uh, the keeps on, on the 18 for horse play, but uh, the keep, we work keeps all the time, all right? Big coaching point on keeps is speed, depth, and control. Get as, get as much depth as you can. Some guys want to cut that thing off because they, they, they think I got to throw five yards first. Well, if, he's, if, you gotta, if your guy's worried about 
throw the ball five yards further, then we got the wrong guy playing quarterback. Okay? Get him away from that contained defender. Okay? That's a great picture I guess you did. This happened by accident, this wasn't by design. But this net drill, everybody has them, red, white, and blue. And what we do is when they come out of there, you give them a number right before they hit the hash, hit the hash mark. And then tell them red, white, and blue. And then they make, you know, he doesn't know where he's hitting, but he's coming out of there, get as much depth as he can, getting away from the contained defender. But the key is when you go from the re redirection drill to the net drill, you got to move the dummies. If you don't, that's what happens. Uh, I go by right now? Oh, here we go. Yeah, you gotta move the dummies, because this is what happens to them right there. They run right in. <laughs> hey, any questions about quarterback? I wish I had a little better film to show you. There's a lot of good shots, particularly guys not doing it right. It, it's great. The best film you'll find out when you train these quarterbacks on five step drop is the first film you take them. Because there's a ton of bad habits. A ton of bad habits. Just you just stay the course. The most most important thing is. Don't get too technical about it because you don't want to make them robots. But the most important thing about quarterback play is that they have rhythm and consistency in their stroke and that they're throwing downhill. If you accomplish that, then you're, you're on course for an active quarterback, particularly at a young age. Because we, we coach the hell out of it in the NFL and uh, it, needs to be, it needs to get corrected early. I, I, I'm not, I'm not uh, defaming anybody, but it's amazing how much bad fundamentals you see in the college and professional level. So, I mean, it's going to be great to get a start at these young guys. Any questions about quarterback play? Yeah, what, what part of the mechanics would you not mess with, or would, would you tend to not mess with? Well, you got to be sensitive. you got to be sensitive on throwing motions, you know. And I, I have not been particularly, but I, I know there are people who think, I mean, if you take a guy number one in the draft, then you're going to change his throw motion. <laughs> you know, the owner's like, I just gave that guy a $25 million check. <laughs> There's something wrong, so you, you better do it. I mean, that's that's a whole different scenario, also. Uh, you got to make it natural. You know, every every kid's different. Everybody has, you know, everybody wants to fall from like Dan or Joe or. And, and I have Montana tape that still today is the best tape to use because he was he was so fundamentally sound. You know, he was a very athletic guy. And, and, and one point I didn't make is every every guy's body type's different. Okay, you got guys that are higher cut. Okay. They're going to be a little different on their punch reach step, right? They're, they're, you got to watch their target step because, you know, it may be a little longer, but they're also probably a lot more athletic to be able to get their, you know, to keep their back foot underneath their hip and get over top of the, over top of the target step like that. So you got to, you got to be aware of body types too. Body types is a key coaching point. But the, the most important thing, particularly at a young age, is just make sure that you're consistent with the point of release. You don't want to be down here, okay? You, you know. Look, look, just look for things like this. That's not good. That's better. You know, just just throw in motion. Make sure it's the same all the time. You know, when a guy's throwing on the line, and tell them quarterbacks when they're throwing the football, just watch the way the ball travels. That tells you a lot. And, and I guess if I must miss one of the slides here. When we talk about the follow through, okay, loose elbow, spin of the fingers, okay, bringing the index finger through, target line of the football. Have an understanding when you're running to your right that your ball rotates right to left. What's going to happen? If you're running to your left, the ball, take, ball rotates right to left to your left. What's going to happen? Throw go routes, five and a hitch, 44 yards into a bucket. I do it all the time, the old bucket drill. You guys have seen that. Get them out there. It's not, it's not guys want to just throw it out there and put, it up, put on the money. The most important thing about the go route is the angle the ball comes in. If you're running to catch the ball, if it comes at that angle, you, 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 you have given the defender a better chance of, of deflecting the ball. But if it comes in at this angle, the odds are better on the offense. Okay? Train the go route. Same thing when you're training the go route. You know, you've got wind up here in this part of the country or, or anywhere, really. Even if you get in the domes, the ball's going to rotate left to right. You know, not worse than God beats down on the go route and the quarterback throws it five yards out of bounds. Not good. Okay? Same thing to your left. All those little things you can train the hell out of them. <coughs> we'll, we'll finish up every Wednesday, Thursday practice in season. And we'll throw 10 go routes to the right, 10 go routes to the left, and go in. Because what happens a lot of times, and it happens to all of us, you work on fundamentals. You have spring ball, you go in training camp, you're feeling good, your fundamentals are intact, then you get to the season, what do you do? Practice plays. That's a bad habit. That's a bad habit. We'll, we'll do 15 minutes of individual all year. You gotta do individual. What's the difference? 
Yeah, Jeff, Jeff put in 8D4. So there's other people running that play. But why, why, why does Atlanta, why does Atlanta, why does Denver run it better? Because they work on the same things every day. Every day. I had the opportunity to work with Alex Kiss my first two years in the league. The, the guy is very good at what he, what he does, and he's done it for a long time. He's out there every, he does the same things over and over and over again. Volume looks good, sounds good. Doesn't win football games. Don't get caught up in plays. There's nothing worse as an offensive coordinator. A guy comes in and says, hey, hey, did you see what Dallas ran last week? We got to put that in. You know? Where the hell were you at in February and March when I was installing the offense? That's when you put it in. That's when it goes in. And, and I bet you 99 times out of 100, you got to play that conceptually attacks the defense the same way. Because you did your homework. You have a system of football. That is critical to success on offensive football. Don't get caught up in plays. I'm rambling here. You got any questions? What about hand placement on the ball? To me, hand size, comfort level. I mean, I, you know, same thing with Clinton. I mean, Terry Bradshaw, he, he, he had his finger on top of the ball. You know, I, I, I think the thing you've got to watch against is to get too much of the ball, too far down. That's, that's the only thing I'm ever going to be critical at. But once again, I, 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 I work with older guys. So uh, that may be not a good answer for the, for the youth for the youth quarterbacks. I just want to look at too much down on the ball. I've never said you're too high or too low. Uh, Alex Smith was very high on the ball and, and held, and he was already supinating, right? Supinating the ball as it come out. So I, I moved his hand down and got his elbows in because he, he was like this, you know? So I, I got him more here. He's the only guy whose hand I've ever moved that I personally moved on the Exchange? Uh, I always talk about seeing the ball. The ball should always come to the belly. Yeah. First, first of all, it comes to your stance. Don't let them get too wide. I mean, just you know, you, you want a you want a good shoulder length stance. If you have a center problem, uh, we had one a few years back. The center was light, getting up in age, didn't have a lot of leg strength. So he, he you know, smart guy though. He was different more than, than usual on, on his own skin blocks or anything away, any wide, eight, nine hole play, is what it happened. We trained the quarterbacks on any wide play that, you know, they know the play, they call it, 18, 19, fours, go ride the center a little more, but they gotta be caught with the back foot, okay? That's really where the stagger step helps you, because you're gonna get one out of the way. Uh, as far as the run game, pressure, pressure, pressure step. We, we've gone to all reverse footwork in the run game because of that matter, because my, I'm of the opinion I've flown through a year and year. The first footwork gets you the hell out of it. You can put your pressure, you can put your pressure on one step, and you get it and go. You know, get it and go. So, does that answer your question? But the biggest thing is don't let them get too wide. And coach them center should drop step too much. But, you know, it's hard too. You got you got you got a gap player, and he's got he's got to reach him. You know, educating the quarterback on, on run schemes like is not bad either. Okay, I don't know what we're going to call this or just just lines calls, but we had a rip and list call. Anytime the quarterback knew that, heard that, he knew that center was going hard right or hard left. That, that was one line call that he had to know in the run game. All right? That was kind of a word for him. What would you recommend uh, with a young player that has a hitch in his throwing motion? I'm sorry? A young player, like an eighth grader or freshman, that has a hitch in his throwing motion. Talk about here? No, it would come down to his waist and then come up and throw. How would you do I would I'd put him on the line and just make him step and throw. And he coach the ball carries to the draw to the point of release. Using all the points I just stick. You know, I am huge on just sticking a guy. Cody Pickett, kid in San Francisco, phenomenal athlete. One of the best athletes I've ever coached. Mechanics, he, he's, he's got some problems. We would stand, we would stand on the line and, and warm up when he would coach him. He would with the other quarterback. And I would just keep coaching him the whole time. And, it, and, it's, and this is a very good point. Coach the hell out of the fundamentals when you're standing there playing catch. You know, talking about the, the, the draw, the pull, the point of release, all that, the hips coming through, the back foot off the line, the coordination of the hips and shoulders, target line, ball tracking. And then as soon as that whistle blows and you go to a competitive drill, you tell him, forget about fundamentals. Because what's going to happen to you, I had Billy Joe Tall from Kansas City. He'd been in the league 10 years. And he's like, man, this footwork stuff, this is good stuff, man. I've never had this, had this stuff. So we're in a 7-on-7 seven seven drill. Clear as day, he's got a guy wide open on the post. Bang, misses it. I go, man, I said, Billy, what happened? He's out. 
I was too heavy on my fifth step. I said, <laughs> fifth step. Yeah, it's wide open. Yeah, care if you're on your head. <laughs> I mean, he's obviously, yeah, you know. So that, that, that was actually a good lesson for me. I, I would go over coaching again. You know? So he's got a guy wide open for about how his weight distribution on his fifth step. Once, once, once there becomes a guy moving target on it, fundamentals are out the window. You, you, what I've found is if you just keep coaching them, it's a lot of one on one time. Just like anything we do, any, any other position, you stay after it, the best it shows up in the competitive field. But you got to tell them, don't be, don't worry about your feet, you're competing. We can bring Jags up here and go through some more zone blocking or something. <laughs> uh -huh. All right. <laughs> if we were picking 25, I'd answer that question. We're they're, they're, all, they're, all, they're, all, they're all very talented. They're all distinctly different. Uh, I think the kid in Texas obviously is a special athlete. You know, I, I think Ted Thompson has had a great analogy, the reason why we spent so much time on him. You know, he could be the, the Michael Jordan, Sam Bowie you know, analogy of, uh, is he the next Michael Jordan? You know, do you pass on a quarterback because, you know, because you, hey, you don't need one because you've you got a young guy to get to So I was at his workout. He's an exceptional athlete. He's a sidearm guy. You know, but, uh, that, huh? I think it depends on how his bonuses. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that's not true. But the, the kid didn't miss a thing. You know, he's got a lot of good breath, a lot of natural ability. He didn't miss a throw on his workout. You watch him on film, he makes good decisions. Uh, I, I was actually pleasant. I, was, I wasn't su surprised. He, his ball accuracy was better than I thought. He made all the throws. Uh, Lynn uh, Max, is, uh, his workouts tomorrow, you'll see Ted will be going there. He's probably the most polished guy of the group. You know, he's decision making and everything. Very good mechanically, uh, fundamentally. You know, I, I think Covey is probably kind of a dark horse. He's a powerful young man. Um, he's did uh, a great workout at the combine. I think, you know, I think he, he's, he's the guy that has probably the biggest upside as far as the pure quarterback. I think Vince is the guy that would be the great player. Athlete and Matt's good. He probably won any, any system that you know, they run in the NFL. So I think I'm three distinctly different. I think they're all the top 10 picks. You know, worthy of one, I just said. There, huh? <laughs> <laughs> That's something I learned about this job. You're going to talk your ass off and say nothing. <laughs> Is that kind of getting to a trend, or is that coming from the colleges? I'm a fan of the running quarterback, just, just a, or, or, or not particularly a running one, a guy that can make plays you know, out of the pocket, because it goes back to what I said. I never really realized until I was in Montana in, uh, in Kansas City. I thought that was the first sign of a, of a great player who just started to lose his legs a little bit. And he talked about it, you know. And he still got out of the pocket at 36, 37 years old and made four or five plays a game. It, 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 that, was a, that was a real light bulb for me going off the, you know, the guy that's just going to stand there, they know where he's going to be. That's not a good, that's not good. So uh, as far as our protection schemes and the way we attack people in the passing game, we're very conscious and conscientious of changing the landmark of the quarterback, you know, roles. A lot of people don't like to sprint out in the pro game. I think you have to, you know, uh, because the defensive lineman, the speed of the game has, has increased. I got into the league in 93. You know, used to have the 270 the, the pound, 260 pound middle line, linebacker back then that just, just ate everything up, tackle, tackle. That no longer exists. You know, the linebackers are all 245. They, they can run like, you know, run like a deer because the speed of the game is really increased. So I think with that, your guy, he, he doesn't need to win a 40 yard dash, but he needs to be able to slide his feet and be mobile enough to, to, to make, like I said, five or six plays a game. Get your question, yes. What's the biggest surprise when you hit coach in NFL when something you didn't expect that kind of just caught you by surprise? I've said this over and over again. I, I know people talk about you know the hiring process and the firing process, how tough it is. Um, I know my, my experience was you, they fly up here on a jet, you, know, you swing by Lambeau Field, you know, you're, you got the hair on the back of the neck stand up. 
and you get to go talk to the media for two hours. It's, it's a lot of fun. But, uh, <laughs> it's a great experience, you know. You come in, you're, you're on the highest of highs, and the next day, you got to release the coaching staff. And, um, I had to release four guys that I had worked with in the past. That, that was very hard. But it's also, the thing I've learned, you got to just, what's in the best interest of Green Bay Packers? That's, I ask that question all the time before any decision I make. That, 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 was, that was definitely hard. Um, second thing, probably administrative duties. Because this is what you love to do. I mean, you like to, you just thought, you know, when you put the film together, uh, you can talk about the quarterback play for seven, seven hours. You know, those days are over. Well, Jeff and I are looking for a pocket of time to talk about that. Uh, you know, Jeff and I are running the offense. So the, the time man's of the administrative duties is probably the second. But those are the two biggest things. I would say I was surprised. You know, it's kind of like you hear about it until you live it. You have a better understanding. So well, those are the two biggest things that, that stand out. Is there a position you would coach right now that you, you definitely would want to keep going so you don't get that attached? Well, I, I think you know, you've definitely got to be involved with quarterback if you're call the plays. So we're talking about that right now. Because the play caller and the quarterback you need to be on the same page. Um, you need to be on the same page that's been time. So that, that's, that's, if I do, that, that's where I'll be. I'm also a believer too. I don't discredit other other individuals up there, but I think if you're known for something, the team should reflect that. I, I don't want to be, you know, I'm not put in the run and shoot you so we're good on offense. And that's what I'm saying. I, I do know this if you're good on defense, if you're good on special teams, you put offense in the way you want. And that, that's, that's not my philosophy. I know that's true. <coughs> I, 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 you know, I, really, I think it's important that we are good on offense. It's more important. We may be great on defense, great on special teams. What's the word on Devon Walker and are there any free agent receivers? The theme of the day was quarterback. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I just dealt with that stuff for two days. Man, I'm sort of going, you, you look like Bob McGill. I thought he was on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, nothing's changed. I mean, it, you know, he's under contract with the Green Bay Packers. Green Bay Packers treat their players better than any place I've ever been. I'm not just saying that because I'm standing here wearing this shirt. But uh, it's a first-class organization. I, I think it's a situation that I'll obviously inherit it, and, and we're dealing with it. Relationship building, communication. You know, when that breaks down, you have problems. So we're, we're just trying to improve it. Coach, you've got to be so about changing your philosophy. Yes. In the past, they've been more like an individual, individual program environment, from my understanding. Um, I was here in '99 with, with, the, with the old program. A lot of machines, a lot of, a lot of individual work. Uh, Off-season program was, was not stressed. You know, it had success that way in the past. I think the game has definitely changed. You know, the landscape definitely has changed. You know, when 31 other teams are have to have you know, 95, 100 percent attendance. Now, see the program, you don't, we're at a disadvantage. And that's, not, that's one of the reasons why we went to the free weights. We got uh, nine, nine of the big power racks, you know, the best ones ever made are strength coaches. Says Cleveland has seven, we got nine, we got the most of the ladies. See, all strength coaches are easy. Who's firing up about that? So am I. How many can fit in here? I think we get nine in here, because Cleveland has seven. I said, well, I guess we got to get nine. That's what that's <laughs> so we've gone free weights. Uh, we've removed probably 20 machines from the, from the weight room. You know, the sight lines are really good. It's, it's a practice environment now. And Brock Ellison is our strength coach. Mark LeVon, Brandon Johnson. You know, Brandon's a young man from uh, Purdue. Mark's been up there. And we're off to a great start. We're over 90% of our attendance. And, uh, the guys are really into it. Everything's free weights. And, you know, Brock is really good with the you know, training and teaching and the weights. And that, that's, that's the direction we're going. I said the same thing on the players. It's the foundation of our offense, the defense, and special teams, particularly up front. You know, I think you need to play your of your football team should reflect the environment you live in. We're the Green Bay Packers. So we need to be big, tough, strong, get after it, get up on quick line, and we're going to big, strong, quick line. So, uh, that's where we're at. And that's an area I think we can greatly improve on. Expectations for the quarterback from the time he leaves the huddle until the ball snaps. 
Well, that's a great question. Um, number one, how to command in the auto communication. You'd like to be at the line of scrimmage by 18 seconds. In particular, the way we've gone, we've gone with a lot more run pass options at the line of scrimmage. We get into things like that. We teach our run game. We break our run game down in four categories. We have running runs, spotted runs, which means it doesn't matter what the defense they call, we're running. So, you know, with that, you can get in. If you are there at 18 seconds, you can double count. You know, you can hard count those types of things. So everybody, you know, everybody knows their assignment. Uh, then we get into what called box roll runs and adjusted runs. An adjusted run is a run if we're running weak. We got too many over there. We're running over there. So there's ability to change the play. And uh, box roll runs is. We're going off the box. You know, we're going to run it left. We've got four count to the left. We're going to run it right. We've got four count also to the right. We're going to throw the ball. So uh, 18 seconds is kind of, if you go to one of our practices, you'll see a 40 second clock. It'll be set at 18 seconds every time he breaks the house. So that's, that's our goal um, as far as time. So that every has the time. Yeah, and, but also, you know, at the high, at the high school level, okay. I've evolved from, I think I've learned, you talk to the quarterback, you know, you get cover two. Here's what you're thinking in the past game, you cover three. Well, I put on film, but I don't know what the coverage is sometimes. I, I don't know what it is that the opponents are teaching. It's like some hybrid of something yeah. that, that I haven't seen. So I, I felt like early on, I've, I've paralyzed him a little bit. Yes. I've asked him to, in a real short period of time, diagnose something that I don't know what it is. So, so we, we've gone from count safeties, uh, safety alignment, corner alignment, number of people in the box, just try to give him a short checklist. I'm curious as to what your checklist might be and the cues that you can play off of. You're talking particular passing. More so than that. Uh, when I first got into coaching the quarterback, I, I designed a format called the quarterback format. I basically took it from the time you got the play entry to the time the ball was snapped to the time it's, it's, a, it's an outline of form. Basically, what I've done, because of that, I don't think you can teach. I tell our players on offense all, all the time. You know, if you're in the football, you know, they're either in a four man line look, there's a, get, there's a guard or a center to cover. That, that's a lot of fun as far as the, the offense. Or it's an OK defense, both guards are covered. Or they're covered with both guards and the center. They can't play any more fronts. Same thing with coverages. I tell them there's only, there's only three coverages in football two deep shell, three deep shell, and empty. You know, there's two types of man who's on. That's all they need to know. Because we teach the passing game, quarterback has three reads. We put it. So when that play goes in, he knows his reads. His read falls in one of those three categories. It's either a pure progression read. I'm telling him. I'm telling him. This is, he's number one. He's number two. He's number three. Period. So check it down. Or you have a progression with an option. You're telling him one, two, and three is, but they rule the coverage like three backer. Or that makes you know, like they overload the coverage that side. You've got the clean one-on-one, -on -one. picture look we refer to as. You can go him one and your check downs two. You always build a triangle for them. So progression, progression option. And the third reads a PSL. Where he comes up and goes, okay, two deep shell, I'm working strong. Three deep shell, I'm working away from rotation, period. And then as they advance, you get into man, now, now you're involved in matchups with three deep shells, things like that. So I, I have taken reads because I've sat quarterback meetings you sit there, okay, that's a front back outside read, that's an outside triangle read, that's a front back piece of front back. You just spend more time learning reads for every place. So I, I, I'm talking to the guy that they get that from day one. Every pass play we have in our offense fits in the screen. Those three reads. Coach, your quarterbacks, uh, do they call their own protection? No, center, center makes initial declaration. Every protection we put in, and Jeff and I just went through the other day, every protection that's put in, we tell them, here's the protection, here's the stress point in the protection, because if there was one protection, trust me, there's a lot of guys, a lot smaller all of us, everybody be running by now. Tell them what the protection is, here's where there's potential problems, the stress point of that protection is, here's the adjustment. So the center comes up, he, he declares, the Mike linebacker, whatever, whatever type of you know, protection scheme you're in, and then the center or the quarterback can make that particular adjustment if that stress point is being put under fire. But they got, they got, a, they got a hear of protection. I mean, can they change it? Point. I've gone away from hearing this and hearing that, especially in, in, you know, with, with, the, with the noise you're kind of, you know, and just, you know, if the center comes up, he goes there, and then the quarterback goes there, that's an adjustment, okay? He just changed the linebacker type from there to there. There ain't no, I didn't hear 52, or, now you, now you introduce it that way, you know, when you're going through the walkthroughs, 
But if you do it in games, it's that. And if it happens, a lot of times we, we just tell a quarterback just to go like that. That's it. Because we put more on us on our backs than most people do. Because the center, he's, he, you know, he's going to be one of the smartest guys. Because he, he sets the whole thing. He sets the table. But the quarterback can fix it because he's got the best chair. But the he, quarterback ain't blocking anybody. So the only guy that can save it is a guy five yards. So we, we, we train those guys. We spend a lot of time on the run backs in protection adjustments. And how they fit. We, every protection we put in, he has a man in an area. You know, we, we're not in the you got that guy, you know. You got that guy, if not that guy, you got that area. And if you're not in the area, you're helping that guy. Everybody's fitted together, you know. So we spend a lot of time on educating that and just take a proactive approach of, of attacking pressure. Coach, I got a, a kid that's uh, shorter than basically everybody on our team. But he's a real good quarterback. This last year we've had him scrambling, and I'd like to get him in the pocket. Is there some way I could set it up that, that – uh, he can, we can get him some, some uh, throwing lanes? I, I, I became, you know, I got, when I was in the, um, New Orleans, it was my first opportunity to be a coordinator. So, you know, West Coast offense, Bill Walsh, no shotgun, okay? So they, they threw my ass out of West Coast offense a long time ago. Get in the shotgun, because A, it gives you vision. You know, you talk about getting depth and all that, playing out of pocket. You establish that by alignment. It, it, it eliminates most of your inside pressures. You know, I, you know, some people, if a guy knows what they're doing, you know, uh, if, if, I'm playing, if I'm playing a team as a quarterback and third down is under center, I'm bringing inside pressure. Because, you know, third down, it's going it's to be man to man, it's going to be tight. Get people in his face. So I, my, my recommendation would be shotgun and the sprints out of the shotgun. I, I really like the sprints out of the shotgun because, once again, he, he, you know, the footwork's easier because you've already got the depth. Now, within your footwork training, the only thing you got to accomplish is getting the hips and shoulders turned to, 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 the, uh, to the primary receiver. So most of our sprints, and we call them sprints and speeds, sprint to the close side, speed to the open side, is done from the gun. So changes the launching point of the quarterback. It's an easy, it's a gap protection. Gives them, I mean, so that would be my, my recommendation. I play the whole season. Where I you got someone special, Vince Young, you know, put him in the gun. You know, just, you know, don't try to put, a, as they say, a Ryan Peg in a square hole. Absolutely. All your one-back runs are good out of the gun. Your two-back runs are fine, too. You know? Yeah, I think the gun's way to go if you've got a vision problem. I have a question and a uh, favor to ask of you. First, the question, uh, what do you think? Have you ever used a hill to train the quarterback to, for power for the back? And then you said about you know, throwing down hills and that kind of that feeling. And the favor to ask is, uh, hopefully you'll achieve it the fastest. <laughs> You won't be so predictable that when we see two running backs in the back there, we know it's a run and once one back, we know it's a pass. <laughs> 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 you want my politically correct answer out of here? Well, when it was one back in the backfield, if they got more than you got, they're running, you're a dumbass. I'll just say that, okay? So, um, no, I've never done the speed. You know, we, I've, I've been to places that have had it, but I've never taken the quarterback on it. That's, that's a good idea. I mean, it's. I've never tried it, though. What's your philosophy on audibles? You know, you have coaches in the league that, you know, particularly Indianapolis, that, you know, Peyton Manning gets up there, and he's constantly changing plays. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, he's been very successful at it. What's your philosophy on allowing the quarterback to, you know, change a play? I think it's uh, – I'm, I'm a big believer in it. You know, uh, I go back to Joe – you know, a lot of people, you first encounter as you, you get into business. Montana played his whole career with two audibles. And it built, you know, he had, he had a sprint audible and a three-step drop to get the ball out. You know, the best thing, we, when we do our philosophy at first day, we talk about best play available. You have to have an audible package. I talked about two-minute offense, box four runs. We put them in day one because when a quarterback learns that you're going to run the ball over here, there's too many over there, run over there, and they got too many all together, throw the ball, you've all, you're already training him for two minutes. And when push comes to shove, you got to win in two minutes in, 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 a, in a football game. So, um, answer your question. I'm, 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 we're, we're audibles from day one. It's built into our base, into our base plays. Coach, how much you critique Aaron Rodgers? Just a little. You know, I've, I've been on the field with him for 90 minutes, um, but I, I, I was fortunate. I spent a lot of time with him during the, uh, the NFL draft last year. I was in San Francisco. We, we was Alex and uh, Smith and Aaron Rodgers. So 
I think Aaron Rodgers got, has got a tremendous upside. You know, he, he played two years at Cal Berkeley. Uh, his strength, I think, is his ball accuracy and strength, and, and, and he's a very good decision maker. If you, if you watch him play the game, he, he doesn't get out of, outside the box too often. You know, he's not out drifting and trying to hit the backside post and, and things like that. So that, that's kind of where I'm at right now. I haven't gone through a battle one yet, but I think the kid has a very bright future. Strong arm. He's got a good strong arm on him. Don't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, you know, I, I just think if, 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 it, if it's an adjustment that, you know, it, I think you got to get into that minor major thing. I mean, you know, Bernie Kosar, I mean, he threw, I mean, but God, you got, talk about bar accuracy. I mean, he got, got through it as accurate as any guy in that, in that era that he played in. So, you know, but those, the, those are the things I'm talking about major. I mean, you start moving a guy's point of release, that, that's a major adjustment, you know. I think the things that you got to really focus, the thing you can really help any quarterback, regardless of his strong motion, is from the waist on. Spend a ton of time. It's all about footwork. It doesn't matter what position you play. Your feet are the key. And that, that's the thing. I don't care how the guy throws the ball. He's gonna, he's gonna, his footwork is going to be the way that we do it because it works. I've seen it work. I've done it long enough. So I, I change everybody's footwork, everybody I've ever worked with. So well, number four, that, I, I thought I was going to change his in 99. That didn't work, but um, <laughs> he, he's he, he's the only he's the only one. But as far as you get into that, that's a that's a major correction, you know. You get into that. That's why I think when it's, if you can have him try it too, because you know if, if he has a comfort level and he because bottom line is production. I mean you know perf performance. So um, we're good. Okay, so answer your question. One more question, because I know. Jim. I was uh, wondering what your uh, philosophy was as the, on the quarterback as a ball handler. Okay. You know, uh, exposing the ball uh, rather than. Uh, when I, when, I learned, when I first learned that everything was shoot the ball, you know, extend, but, you know, you never took two hands off the ball. And then uh, Steve Bono, Kansas City, big hands. And he, on our third fake game, seven steps, he'd lay that thing, you know, he'd take us and he'd lay it out there. And it was, it was such a better fake. Talking to linebacker coaches, Marty Sean and I were talking about one day with Steve, because he said, why do you, he just brought it up in a drill one day. So, the answer to your question is, if, if a guy doesn't have the big hands, you know, if he's, if he, if he's not a guy you really trust, keep two hands on the ball. And, and, and just go with always keeping the ball, you know, and showing the hand. But if you got the, the guy that, you know, in particular our level, nine times out of ten you do, expose that football. Because that, that's what the defense is looking at. Especially with all this Tampa 2, you know, everybody who's playing defense with so much vision to the ball, you know, that's all they're looking at. Get that ball exposed, but I would think at the high school level, it's got to be someone you're comfortable with taking it back. I mean, it's a it's a base fundamental, two hands on the ball. So, okay. Thank you, gentlemen. I enjoyed it. Thank you.